And I don't care if she's sitting on a pile of money like Oprah Winfrey on TV Guide. So let's talk about Oprah sitting on a pile of money on the front of TV Guide. This line was part of a season three episode of A Different World that aired in October 1989. Whitley volunteered at the youth center where Sinbad's character Walter worked, and her wallet was stolen by one of the boys at the youth center named Dion. The line was said by Walter in response to Dion's nonchalant attitude about stealing Whitley's wallet. Dion. Why? This is no big deal. You've got more money. Correction, it is a big deal. And I don't care if she's sitting on a pile of money like Oprah Winfrey on TV Guide. <laughs> you don't touch it. Yes, sir. And the line was inspired by just that. Oprah's August-September 1989 cover of TV Guide, which was less than two months prior to this ADW episode. But what's interesting is that it actually was not Oprah sitting on the front of TV Guide on a pile of money. The only thing that belonged to Oprah on that cover was her head. What? You see, TV Guide had photoshopped Oprah's head onto someone else's body, then took it up a notch adding a pile of money to accompany their title, Oprah, the richest woman on TV, how she amassed her $250 million fortune. At the time, the Oprah Winfrey Show had been on air for three years and had acquired a mass following in such a short time. And Oprah was no doubt the Beyonce of talk show TV. I know, I, I agree. So why would anyone want or need to Photoshop such a successful woman such as Oprah onto anyone else's body is beyond us. Oprah was very influential and had graced the cover of many magazines prior to this, including TV Guide. But let's start with the most important question. If it wasn't Oprah's body, then whose body was it on the cover? The answer, singer and actress, Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret, who is 80 years young currently, was looked at as a sex symbol during the 60s and 70s, and her career continued through the decades that followed. She has won five Golden Globes, an Emmy, and has been nominated multiple times for Academy Awards and Grammys, plus other numerous awards. She was initially pushed as the female Elvis Presley, with whom she had an intimate relationship at some period during that time. Will someone tell this Romeo? The lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. Anne Margaret was also known to be a good friend of legendary singer Tina Turner. The two ladies had starred together in the 1975 movie Tommy, and Anne Margaret actually took in Tina Turner when Tina left her abusive relationship with Ike Turner. <laughs> Anne Margaret is also credited with helping Tina get her divorce attorney. No doubt that Anne Margaret was a legend in her own right at that time and still is. <laughs> Anne Margaret's fashion designer was the first to recognize the Photoshop, and not because of the face and body, but because of Anne Margaret's dress. George Curvey, Anne Margaret's publicist at that time, confirmed that the photo was indeed from a publicity shot of Anne Margaret, taken from a Rockettes special 10 years prior. I think she was shocked, he said about Anne Margaret's reaction to the cover. If you look at the two pictures, they're identical. It's even her ring on Oprah's hand. Speaking of the huge ring on the finger of the hand that's on the hip. Oh look at God. the size of this rock! Oh, Gibraltar is a molehill, right? Many Oprah fans were shocked to see such a slim Oprah. The talk show guru would openly and transparently discuss her struggles with weight loss and also shared her huge 67 pound weight loss achievement during a 1988 episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show. Oprah made her entrance pulling a red wagon filled with 67 pounds of animal fat to represent the pounds that she had lost. There's a place here called Moo and Oink. Moo, 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 moo and Oink. And uh, uh, I say, let's go over to Moo and Oink and uh, see if we can get uh, 67, see what 67 pounds of uh, mooing oink fat looks like, and let's put it in a wagon. That's why I did it. At the time, I felt it was important to show it in that way because I had not, I'd starved. I'd literally starved for four months or four and a half months. However, even with the weight loss, many people knew that something wasn't quite right with Oprah's body on the TV Guide cover, and Oprah's camp was not happy either. Christine Tardio, a spokeswoman for Oprah's Harpo production company at the time, said, Oprah would not pose on a pile of money like that, nor would she pose in that revealing address. 
It's not something she would ever do. The biggest kicker and insult about the TV Guide photoshopped cover is that TV Guide had not asked approval or permission for the photoshop to either Anne Margaret or Oprah. What was the reason? What was the reason? Mm -hmm. They knew what they were doing was wrong, so they knew not to ask our good sis Oprah because they knew what she would say. Hell no. What did you say? Hell no. What did she say? Hey Alexa. Hell to the no. TV Guide acknowledged a week after publication that unsuspecting readers might just think that the photograph was real and later apologized about the whole debacle. But David Sindler, TV Guide's national section editor, stated, Anne Margaret should be thrilled because she's got another TV Guide cover. And Oprah should be thrilled because she looks terrific. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Our sentiments exactly, Russell. I think we can all agree that Oprah was fabulous enough to grace that cover as all of herself, regardless of weight or opinion and views of others' definition of pretty or cover-worthy. Women, and especially women of color, have had to constantly prove their worth despite their accomplishments and talents since before any of us watching or hearing this were even thought of. In this same year, 1989, Oprah starred in The Women of Brewster Place, with her production company producing the amazing miniseries about the personal trials of a diverse group of African-American women during the racially charged 60s. ABC proudly presents Oprah Winfrey, Jack A, Paula Kelly, Lynette McKee, Lynn Whitfield, Robin Givens, in the triumphant conclusion of the women of Brewster Place. The point is that we all know that certain races, body types, features, etc., are unfortunately looked at as more desirable than others. That's why we have self-love empowerment anthems like TLC's Unpretty. Christina Aguilera, beautiful. No matter what they say. And Beyonce's Pretty Hurts, just to name a few. But I digress, because we can go down a rabbit hole with this one. So just let us know in the comments what you all think. Guess my job is done. Until next time, be well, cousins. Bye.